Hey guys, uh, my name is Jacob Hoover and I'm the Education Experience Supervisor here at White Labs. Uh, today we are in the White Labs tasting room. We are going to be tasting some beers from White Labs Brewing Co. here in San Diego and discuss why they're unique and what's different about them. So here in front of me I have three of our different examples of our Belgian Trapels, all using a different yeast strain for fermentation. The base wort recipe is going to be identical in each, and the recipe they used was consisting primarily of American two-row, a little bit of flaked rice, and some white wheat malt. Not extremely traditional, uh, but it's a cool take to experience what the yeast does in a different malt uh, recipe. The hops used in these beers are also uh, slightly untraditional. We're using Mandarina Bavaria and Hallertau Middlefru. Um, giving it a unique fruity character to kind of balance with the expressive yeast strains. The original gravity of these beers is around 19 Plato or the high 1070s, so it's going to produce a pretty big beer. The IBUs are right around 35, so nothing too crazy. Still within spec for a Belgian Chapelle. The three yeast strains, though, are where we're really experimenting and having fun. The one on the left here is the WLP 510 Bastogne Belgian Ale Yeast. Uh, here in the middle we have our WLP 570 Belgian Golden Ale Yeast. And then the third one, which is extremely unique, we're using WLP 833 German Bach Lager Yeast. So we're using a traditional lager fermentation on this Trapel base recipe. The first example I'm going to start with is the 510 Bastogne Belgian Ale Yeast. Um, and I'm really looking for the ester and phenol character expressed from the strain. That's normally what you're going to be seeing in a Belgian Trapel and that's most likely what's going to be dominating the flavor and aroma profile. And right away, the first thing I get is banana. It's very banana forward, has some underlying pear, and then the phenolic compounds come off as clove as well as almost like a potpourri, like a spicy herbal floral character all mixed into one. But it's really pleasant, it's not overwhelming, it's balanced nicely. So moving on to the next sa sample, we have the WLP 570 Belgian Golden Ale Yeast. Uh, what I'm expecting is a similar character to the 510, but based on beers I've seen this yeast strain used in before, it's going to be a little bit even more expressive than the 510 was. So let's take a sniff and see what we got going on. Wow, yeah, so this is uh, a lot more vibrant and a lot more potent essentially in aroma. I'm getting that ban banana character is almost coming off as bubblegum now and it's a little bit less phenolic than the 510 was. I'm, it's a lot more ester and fruity derived, so it's almost like you're smelling a, a fruit basket or uh, sometimes when you get cut up fruit in a, in a tray, it's a lot going on. You get some melon character, you're getting some apple and pear, but the dominant is gonna be the banana and almost bubblegum-like character. Okay, so now we have our last sample to evaluate. In this one, we use the WLP 833 German Bach Lager Strain. So, knowing that our, we're using a lager strain, it should be extremely different from the two Belgian strains. These, these classifications of strains are almost exact opposites, right? The Belgian strains are very expressive, a lot of esters, a lot of phenols, where these lager strains are generally going to be cleaner and not provide as much character and let the malt and the hops shine through in the beer. So, let's take a sniff and see what we got going on. Okay, so yeah, it's completely different than the other two. It's extremely clean. There is still some ester character in this beer. Uh, we didn't age it as long, and being a bigger beer, the yeasts are going to produce more metabolites uh, as they chew through that sugar. So there is some level of esters and fruitiness, maybe like a light banana and a light apple in the product, but there is no, none of that phenolic compound, none of that spicy and herbalness going on. And the way this beer comes off to me, it's almost more like a German Maybach or a German Fest beer. Uh, very toasty, that deep, dark uh, bread character. Uh, maybe a little bit of light caramel. And then this just light, fruity alcohol note. Because it is, you know, 8.5% 8, 8 ABV, you are gonna get some of that alcohol in it. But this is a, this is a really cool example of this trio. So we've now evaluated these three beers, and I think there's a few key takeaways that we can discuss and learn uh, after talking about these. The one big thing to note is the ABV was pretty different throughout the, uh, the three of them. There's over a half percent difference, 570 being the highest and the 833 being the lowest, and that would affect the way you perceive the finished product. A second big takeaway I noticed was the 570 was way more expressive than the 510. They both provided the same essence and character and flavor and aroma, 
but the 570 was just so potent. You could almost smell it when holding it a foot or two away from, from your face. And the third thing that I wanna discuss real quick is just how much I was blown away by the A33 because it turned out to be my favorite beer of the three. And I wouldn't have expected that going into a the recipe that we had discussed earlier and knowing the strain going up against Belgian strains in what we wanted to be a makeshift Belgian Trappel um, beer because I thought it would be a little bit unbalanced. It wouldn't provide a lot of, of interesting character. The malt and the hops might not correlate as well as we wanted them to. And it turns out that this was by far the most balanced and interesting beer to me personally. So lastly, just remember that stylistic accuracy is important in some settings, but when creating a beer that you'd just like to enjoy, it's not always the most important aspect. And that is very clear in this flight here. When I went into this flight, I was expecting to like the WLP 570 the most, the Belgian Golden Ale Yeast, because I thought it was going to be the most stylistically accurate example. Uh, but it turns out that wasn't the case. I actually preferred the WLP 833 German Bach Lager Strain because I thought it was the most balanced and drinkable beer. If I was going to just sit down and have a few, I would, have, I would definitely pick this every time. So don't ever take it too seriously and just remember to always experiment and have fun. Thank you.